What is up, YouTube? That's it here, bringing you guys another episode of Intwinja. We are still playing with the Pikachu Orange Guru Trick Room team, but I've made a couple little changes. Uh, first big change is I'm going to be using Sableye over Mimikyu. Now, I really did like using Mimikyu, but half the time when I would go for like the Psych Up or the Trick Room or something like that, they would just really punish it. I think Mimiwax is to a point in the meta where people have generally started to figure it out. So I think I might try and switch it up and go Sableye Snorlax. And the combo with Sableye Snorlax is you go Bake Out Belly Drum, and then you can just Quash and use uh, your big attacks like Rock Slide and Earthquake. And this Sableye is actually going to be holding an Air Balloon, and it's going to have the moveset of uh, uh, Fake Out, Detect, uh, Quash, and Taunt. So no attacks on this guy. Uh, he can't get like taunted by... Uh, prankster users like Whimsicott because he's a dark type, so he's relatively safe from taunt, and uh, I think this is technically going to work, and Sableye is one of my favorite Pokemon, so I might as try, might as well try using Sableye. We're going to run down the items here. We have the Air Balloon on Sableye. I think it's going to be very good considering we're using two Earthquake users, and I actually just really like the Air Balloon because it makes people tunnel on the fact that you are not holding a Focus Sash, so I can Protect Bait, I can Switch Bait, and there's a bunch of different plays that can go around with just having an Air Balloon. Next up is going to be the White Ball on Pikachu, Groundium Z on Garchomp, the Citrus Berry on Oranguru, Mago Berry on Snorlax, and the Focus Dash on Tapu Koko. I'm probably going to be playing this team for the next couple videos because I really do like the team, and I still feel that I haven't hit its max potential yet, so wish me luck, guys. We're going to hop into some games and see if we can win some. Here we go. All right, so our first game is going to be up against a little bit of semi-room. This is Drampa, Hariyama, Oranguru, Marowak, Coco, and Crocodile. Probably not going to be able to spam those discharges here, considering there's a Drampa, a Crocodile, and a Marowak over there. So I'm going to have to go with the Earthquake aspect of the team. Uh, I think I still want to Trick Room. I guess, like... We're both using Oranguru, so like this is going to be a little bit awkward. It looks like we both have similar ideas here, uh, but I do think I can definitely get the better of him. Let's see, my Oranguru should actually be faster than him, so if I ever get the Belly Drum up, I'll probably be in a really good spot. I think I might just show off the Sableye Snorlax part of this team. Um, I would trade Fake Outs with a Hariyama. I don't really like doing that, though. Like His Hariyama actually puts a lot of pressure on this, believe it or not, because he's just going to be able to Fake Out or like at attack my Snorlax. I don't want any of that. Let's see. So that 36 seconds. I'm thinking what I want to do. I'm, I might just go with the Garchomp Sableye. I think that might be just a little bit better. Because he's forced to fake out my Garchomp, and I know he probably doesn't want to. Yeah, that works. Because I can go Quash EQ on his Coco. Yeah, I think I think Sableye Garchomp works. So we're going to go Sableye Garchomp here. Still got 20 seconds. We're going to be bringing our Snorlax. And then looking at this, I am... Probably I'm thinking about bringing the cocoa, but we're gonna bring orange guru just in case it's a uh, you know Instruct is just still really good We're pairing it with the correct Pokemon and note that we have that big foul play for Marowak whenever we need it And I think orange is pretty good against Marowak uh, Remember Marowak's shadow bone doesn't really deal damage to orange because of orange normal typing as well as its psychic So I think this should be fine uh, hopefully Hopefully I outspeed his stuff, because my stuff, while this is made for Trick Room, it's not like zero IV or speed reduced nature, because I just want to be a little bit faster. I don't have to set up Trick Room if I don't want to. So we see uh, Oranguru and Crocodile. Looks like we have the exact same idea coming in here. So we're going to see what he goes for. I bet he's probably going for... I don't think he's going to go for the Earthquake anymore, because he's going to see my Air Balloon, but he gets a very valuable Intimidate off. And uh, I think I'm just going to fake out the Crocodile and go for a Swords Dance. And I think that's probably the correct play here. Because I think I can get away with it. So, we're going to fake out the crocodile. Go for some swords dances. If for some reason he just attacks my Sableye to break my air balloon, I don't really care. Uh, he's going for a protect with his orange guru. That is completely fine. Got no problems with that. He's probably going for a rock slide just to break my uh, air balloon, but I'm not going to let him. So, we get the juicy flinch on the crocodile. And let's see how I actually want to deal with this. I could probably one-shot the orange guru with tech rage right now. I could also probably get away with taunting it. Um... I think I am going to taunt it, because then I could just taunt it in future turns, and uh, he can't instruct, and he's relatively useless. So what we're going to do here is we're going to Z-move the Crocodile. I'm at plus one now, so I think I can take him out. And we're just going to taunt the Orange Guru. If he has a Mental Orb, he has a Mental Orb. It's really no big deal. Remember, we want Trick Room to go up. So, uh, well, we don't want it, but there's not really anything he can do about it, because either way, uh, Garchomp is paired with Sableye. Sableye is Quash. Quash still makes people go last, even in the Trick Room. So I should be fine. So we're busting out the taunt against Orange Guru. These guys are known for having Mental Herb, but we're just we're just scouting it out. And it looks like he doesn't have the Mental Herb. So uh, we take those. Those are definitely things we take. And he is Z-moving me first. That's awkward. I mean, I should have known that he was faster after the first turn. I just wasn't really paying that much attention. Um, 
I don't think it's that big of a problem. Uh, I think I can eat the Tech Rage. Even if he's, like, adamant, I think I can eat it. It really is unfortunate, though, because I should have been paying attention. I should have just quashed and Z-moved that, uh, that guy. But I should be able, like I said, I will be able to eat it. It's just, uh, quite unfortunate. That's all that I had to take that much damage. Uh, so Garchomp's gonna be Z-moving him back. We got the Tech Rage, uh, I don't know, what's, what's a good word? What's, like, a pun I can make on this? We got the, I don't know, Tech Rage Mirror. I, I, I got nothing. Normally, I'm quicker on my feet about talking about stuff like that. But anyways, we should be able to beat him because we are at plus one thanks to our Swords Dance. And uh, let's see what Ungur is going for. If he's going for Trick Room, he's going for Trick Room. If he's not, he's not. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to just see him Psychic the Garchomp slot. He can't use Trick Room, hey. So now next turn, you know he's going to be Trick Rooming. It's not really a... Uh, or sorry, you know that he's going to be Psychicking or Foul Playing my Garchomp. So we can bust out the Drampa here. Okay. So this is where Sableye really has reached its its pinnacle of usefulness. I think I might just protect with Chomp. Let's see what we got. We got we can protect with Chomp, Heart Switch and My Run Guru, and go for Earthquake, and then, yeah, that's a good play. So we're just going to protect here, because there's no reason not to, right? There's no reason not to just protect it. We're not waiting out turns on Trick Room, and we're just going to Heart Switch in our Oran Guru. He's probably going to go for, like, a Hyper Voice or something. Not going to KO my Oran Guru. I know he just forfeits. He just forfeits. So it's not really a Rage Quip, but... Yo, that game was definitely over. And uh, I think it's that Sableye just provides a lot of team support for exactly what this team needs. So that was a perfect example of how Sableye can win a game almost by itself. You know, I could have used Earthquake. I was holding an air balloon. I should have quashed uh, the Crocodile, but going with the Taunt just sealed the Orin Guru either way. And remember, like we said, if the, Sa if the Orin Guru was holding a Mental Herb, uh, if we just taunted him the turn after, he couldn't instruct, he'd be still extremely useless, and we would just have sent out Snorlax, and Snorlax is much better in a Trick Room than all of his other Pokemon, because he's running like a little bit of a semi-room. So, that was a pretty good first game, I know, I don't know why all the first games of this team are over in like one or two turns, but we're gonna hop in another one and see if we can win, keep the win streak alive. Here we go. Alright, so we're going up against Marowak Gyarados, Ninetales, Nihilego, Metagross, Bulu. Oh, that's so disgusting. How do I deal with that? Looks like it's Earthquake time, but there's a Gyarados over there and a Bulu. It's going to be so hard to Earthquake things. How does he actually beat, like, how does he beat Sableye or Guru? Like, I'm just looking at it. Like, I think I can actually guarantee that I get my Trick Room off. Because I can just, I can just quash him. <laughs> I, I can just quash to set up my Trick Room for relatively free. And he's already locked in. I'm looking at going Coco as a lead. I'm thinking about actually going Coco Garchomp. I can go Discharge to kill the Gyarados, and I can go, uh... I mean, I could go with the Z-move on the... Actually, I'm gonna go Coco uh, Pikachu. Really loses to the Marowak, but I don't see any other thing I could be doing. Wait, we know that he's bringing Marowak, so I'm just not. I'm gonna go Orin Guru Coco. That's better. Orin Guru Coco, Snorlax, and Garchomp. That's my four. Perfect. So what we can do here is we can go discharge uh, Trick Room in the next turn, like, after you and stuff like that. So we should be fine. Uh, I can always, like, after you my Orn Guru into using, uh, like, Garchomp and a Z-Move and stuff like that. So there's, there's a bunch of options I have here. Hopefully it's enough to win. This guy's team is pretty slippery. There's a bunch of damage reduction and stuff like that. A lot of types that neutralize and let him get uh, relatively free switches. So we'll see if I can get away with it. We got Coco Orin Guru on the board versus Nihilego Ninetales. So this is going to be an amazing discharge board. I'm expecting him to just sludge bomb my Coco, but it really doesn't matter to me. Maybe he's going to be roaring me with his Ninetales? I mean, maybe. If that's the case, I'm actually just going to go for an Instruct this turn. Because I'll be able to live it, so, yeah, that's actually a really cool play. I might be able to pick up a double KO or something like that. So we're going to instruct our Coco and just pop the Discharge. And if Marowak switches in, like, that's fine. But if he doesn't switch in, I might be able to actually pick up a double KO if we crit the Nihilego. I don't think that's going to happen. So Discharge is happening. I'm really thinking he's roaring my Orin Guru. But, uh, you know, we will definitely see. So here we go. We're getting the first discharge off. Looks like we're not going to be able to pick up a KO on Ninetales. Ooh, we're not going to be able to... The Ninetales is faster than the Hilego. Is he trying to trick room my trick room? Bruh. No, he's going for the Sludge Bomb. Alright, cool. He hit the Bronk target. And uh, he so it takes Life Orb damage. That's cool. So if we can get a Paralyze here with this second discharge, that would be amazing. I would take a Paralyze on either the Ninetales or the Hilego. Looks like we're faster than both of them, so it really doesn't matter all that much. I just kind of want it, because uh, I feel that I earned it. So we'll see, Discharge is coming back out again. 
and the telepathy. I was really just surprised the Oranguru wasn't scarfed. Like, 90% of Orangurus are scarfed. I think that's a safe assumption. And we do get the pair on the Nihilaya. That's definitely something that I will be taking. So here, I'm thinking about going D-Gleam instead of Discharge again, just because I think the Marowak might switch, and that's a little bit better punish. But I don't feel that I need it. I think I'm just going to go for the, uh, the Trick Room play here. I mean, it sucks he's paralyzed. I'm going for Trick Room now, but uh, he's not slower than Oranguru. So we're going to pop a Trick Room here. We're going to go for the uh, Discharge, and we should be able to get this one up. I think we can get the Trick Room up here. I'm really surprised to see that those are his leads, you know? He's really nine tails, probably coming in with Marowak, right? Probably. Oh, it's Bulu. Bulu's a good bring-in. Got no problems with Bulu. He's going to activate the Grassy Surge. He's going to take away my Outer Train. Definitely the good play here. And I should have used Dazzling Gloom, I think. It would have been doing much better damage to Bulu. But we can also paralyze this Bulu. And it kind of sucks that I'm paralyzing all his stuff and going for Trick Room. But Paralyze isn't as devastating as it used to be. So this is technically fine. So going for the Trick Room here. And I think I'm just going to go for an After You Discharge one more time. Because Orn Guru... Orangu should still be slower than that guy. Hmm. Let's see when everyone takes their their licks. All right, so Orangu is gonna be first to restore. So it looks like yeah, we can see the end of turn animation. So I was I was really concentrated on that. So yeah, it's Orangu is still the slowest thing on the board, and uh, I'm probably just gonna go for an after you KO. He's gonna kill one of my mons. I'm gonna bring in my Snorlax relatively safely, and I should be fine from here. I think definitely maybe. We actually don't have to go for an after you. We can just go for instruct because I've been spamming the same move. So yeah, we, can, we don't even have to show our after you yet. We can just go for the uh, the instruct on Coco. And it's going to make Coco use the last move that it used, which has just been discharged for the past three or four turns. So we're going to continue to discharge here. Uh, I'd like to be able to pick up a KO on the Nihilego. Remember, the Ninetales is relatively useless. Uh, Nihilego gets his protect. That's really good for him. It's not really the end of the world. I assume he's going to be killing one of my mons here with the Tabu Bulu. But it doesn't really matter to me. So Discharge is coming out. I'd like to get a KO or a, a para on this Bulu. It's 30% chance with Discharge, remember. Discharge being one of my favorite moves in the game. It's like a Scald that hits everything and gets those juicy Paras. So we're hitting that. Can we hit the para? No, we don't. He goes for a Horn Leech onto the Orn Guru. That's definitely the correct target here. What, about, what should I be doing? What should I be doing here? Sucks he hit the Orn Guru. I thought he was going to hit the Coco. Maybe he realizes that like Coco's useless in the Trick Room. But I get my second Discharge off. Remember, uh, I did get to use two of them. So discharge. We got a second chance at the para. Do we get it? Yes, we do. I'll take those. Those are definitely things that I take. His, the trick room won't last forever, and he's already slower than me, so it doesn't really matter. So let's look at this board. Kind of want to switch my Coco out just to save it. I, I will be switching Coco out. I think I'm going to switch Coco out, send out the lax, and uh, just pop the uh, belly drum here. Probably the play. I mean, I could just go for an earthquake to kill the Nihilego, but... I'm not really scared of Nihilego, like, at all, not even a little bit. So, yeah, we've seen these three plus nine tails. I'm going to bring out the Lax here. I'm trying to pop the Belly Drum, switch out for Garchomp. I think I should be fine. There's two to three turns left on Trick Room. Let me check. I think there's three. Yeah, there's three. Cool. So, we're going to go Belly Drum here. And uh, we're going to probably... I could protect the Coco, or I could just hard switch it. I'm just going to hard switch it. In for Garchomp. Garchomp can block the Sludge Bomb relatively well. Uh, if he's going to go for Horn Leech or something, I should be fine. The Bulu has leftovers, I think. I think I've seen the leftovers on the Bulu, so I don't think he's going to be, like, you know, wood hammering me. He's going for the wood. He's going for the Horn Leech. He's slower than my Snorlax, by the way. He's slower than my Snorlax, which is crazy to think. Um, that's ridiculous. So he takes a little bit of rough skin damage. No big deal. Belly Drum. And let's see if he Trick Room's a Trick Room. That'd be hilarious, because, like, that would lose in the game. Because my Snorlax is technically faster than his, uh, his, uh, Tapu Bulu. And my Garchomp's probably faster than his Nihilo. Well, I am. He's also paralyzed. Let's see, let's see what he goes for. He's going for the Sludge Bomb. He was hitting probably the Coco Slot. Yep. That's a lot of damage. Wow. And, uh, he doesn't get the poison. And he takes more life for damage. And he's going to take the last turn of Hail. He's actually going to lose his Nihilego this turn. Very surprising. Hmm. I think I'm going to switch out Garchomp for Coco to take away the effectiveness of the grassy terrain. And then I'm going to just go for a Rock Slide. I don't think Rock Slide can KO the Bulu, but I want him to lose his grassy terrain. We're going to see what his last Mon is. Yeah, there's the leftovers on that guy. Snorlax is in a pretty decent spot, I think. Sucks I don't have my berry. 
but I don't really think I need it. All right, I assume the Nine Tails is going to be coming out. Well, actually, it's not because he has one turn of hail. This is the last turn of hail, so like he won't be bringing out the Nine Tails. I mean, he could. I have no problem with that. It's going to be the Metagross. I mean, there's totally a grassy terrain, but I really want to Earthquake. I think I have to. Plus six Earthquake cut in half still does the damage, I think. So Earthquake's going to come out. We're just going to protect with our Garchomp for now. He doesn't know anything about our Snorlax set. He literally knows nothing. So we're going for protect with Garchomp. I, I just got to KO this Metagross. It's very, very important. Wood, he had the Wood Hammer. And uh, we barely live in. Barely. This Earthquake might be able to actually take out the Bulu because I'm at plus six. Six of them. I know it's cut, but I think I'm going to be in a decent spot. Wow, that didn't do shit. <laughs> okay. Weakness policy too? Oh, maybe we just lost. We lost. Okay. Meteor Mash hits on the Snorlax as well. Okay. Uh, what the hell can I do? Hail stops. He still has the Nine Tails. Like, that's the thing. Uh, if Boo would have got paralyzed there, I would have probably won the game. Ugh. Yeah, Boo is a bit of a problem for this team. He's just going to bullet punch things out. Like, Coco is really low. I don't know if I revealed that I have Protect on Coco. So I might be able to get a Protect bait. You know, that's the only out that I have. I think I'm going to protect with, I'm going to try and protect with Coco and go for uh, Tech Rage on the Metagross. That's like the only thing I think I can actually do. The last turn of Trick Room. I haven't shown it. If he just, all he has to do is bullet punch the Garchomp and I lose. That's definitely the play. He'd be a fool to bullet punch the Coco slot, I think. I think. Because he's just faster than it. And I actually think he loses if he uh, doesn't bullet punch my Garchomp. So we'll see what he goes for. What do you got? There's the bullet punch. Blocked what? Why though? His bullet could be paralyzed. His bullet. Oh, he nuked the Coco. Oh my gosh. Oh, no. oh my gosh. We live in boys. And I could have definitely earthquaked here, but I wanted to be able to hit the Metagross through the protect if it decided to protect. Because like, let's say, let's just say he protected and I crit through this. Uh, it would have definitely just KO'd the, uh, the Metagross. So I went with the Tech Rage. Remember, his last two Pokemon are a a low HP Ninetales, and this Bulu. So I don't think I really need the uh, Tech Rage in that scenario. I just wanted to potentially have a shot to win if you want for the Protect. I cannot believe he nuked Coco. What? Why, though? All right, so I have to hit... I, I still have not won. I still have not won, but the Dimensions are turned to normal. He's going to Protect with his Ninetales and go for an attack on my Coco slot. But he hasn't been paralyzed yet. He has not been paralyzed. So what we're going to do here... Like here, I guess I, I technically wish I had Tech Rage. I could Tech Rage the Bulu and go for a uh, D Gleam and just be good, but it is what it is. We're going to go for a Dazzling Gleam here, and we're going to go for a Rock Slide because Earthquake just ain't cutting it. Hopefully, our Rock Slide paralyzes the Bulu. We take those. So, Nine Tails is protecting, just like I said. Remember, my Coco's Protect is on cooldown. I can't play this double protect game with this guy. D Gleam's going to be hitting. Who? We just got to kill this Bulu. Bulu, go away. Go away, come on back another day. Be paralyzed, get flinched, all those things. Those are things that we take. I'm coming for him. Yeah, I, I should have saved my Tech Rage. That's definitely a misplay. And he flinches! We rewarded! Our misplay is uh, is saved. The day is saved. So we are going to be able to win, barring incredibly awkward, multiple protects, taking out my Garchomp and other things like that. But I can't believe I won this game. I can't believe that I won this game. I can't. I can't. Like, I gave up. I gave up halfway through. But, uh... We win. We, these are things that we take. And uh, that's that's pretty good. Un unless the Ninetales is Bright Powder. I, I thought for a sec. I, I, I was like, don't do not do that. I was like, don't you quick claw me. Don't you Bright Powder me. Don't you do that to me, Ninetales. So uh, we are going to take the victory. Very, very surprising. That game did not go according to plan, but we stabilized it the best we could. And... Uh, yeah, Bulu is a pain in the butt. So we're going to hop into one more game because, as always, when we play this team, the first game doesn't even count because it's over in one turn. So we're going to hop into another game. Uh, here we go. All right, we're going up against Matteo. This is uh, so many Marowaks lately. Marowak, Crocodile, Serena, so no fakeouts here. 
uh, Coco Gyarados and the Celesteela. Good thing for us, we have multiple Discharge users on our team. So I'm thinking about going Oranguru Coco again. Uh, I can Discharge as Gyarados and Celesteela's. I can Dazzling Gleam. I can Foul Play the Marowak. I can Instruct and go for, like, a uh, double Dazzling Gleam on the Crocodile, same against the Coco. I think this is a relatively safe lead, so we're gonna go Oranguru, Coco, Snorlax, and I think Garchomp still. Garchomp is useful, to say the least. It's useful. Garchomp's a pretty cool Pokemon. Maybe Pikachu, but, like, Garchomp gives me a little bit better out against the Marowak. Maybe I don't need it. Maybe Pikachu is better. I'm gonna bring the Garchomp. Garchomp's pretty cool. It's my Z-move. Z-moves are pretty good. I'm just gonna bring the Z-move. We're hopping into the game. Hopefully I can win. I wish we could bring Pikachu, but this guy's team really doesn't like those electric attacks. So uh, Pikachu is a little bit of a wet noodle in this fight. So we're not bringing Pikachu, but we should be able to get through this with Orn Guru and Coco. So we'll see what happens. Um, What is he really gonna do? My Coco Crocodile. That's completely standard. It's the event Coco, so it's locked into Timid. I'm thinking about just instructing myself into, into D-Gleam, like double D-Gleam. I think that's definitely enough to take his Coco out. The only problem with this is if he goes for, like, the Tech Rage or something. If he goes Dazzling Gleam and Tech Rage, I lose? He could also be protecting his own Coco. Like, Protect Earthquake. He'd also be protecting... Uh, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for the Instruct play. I'm going to instruct him into my Coco, and if I get punished, I get punished. It's not really the end of the world. Wait, he knows that that's what I want to do. So how about, how about this one? How about we just go for the nice juicy trick room? And just the dazzling gleam. Just nice soften everything up. I could even, I could even just protect or switch into my Snorlax. I'm going to switch into Snorlax and trick room. Just I think he's... I think I can get away with this. I really think I can. So we're going to see here. Snorlax is switching in. I think he's playing this really defensive. I, I don't really know yet, though. So he goes for a D-Gleam. He's going for the D-Gleam Tech Rage. I know that he is. He's going for a Taunt. Okay, so I should have taunted him first. So no Trick Room. Okay. That sucks. So I'm stuck here. I think I'm just going to switch. I have Garchomp and Coco. I think he's going to be tech raging my wax. I don't want an earthquake because it would just KO my own shit. I mean, I could switch out the wax. Alright, I could switch out Orange Groove for... No, like for... That's bad too. We're just going to do this. Just in case his Coco has Sash. Because he actually didn't deal that much damage. I don't think he's Spexed. I'm just going to go for an EQ. Alright. Going for another D Gleam. It might be Specs. There's no reason you wouldn't be discharging at this point. He goes for a Taunt on the Lax. Cool. I'm really happy that I went with the Earthquake here. We're doing the best that we can. And uh, if we can get the Coke off the board, that really opens up uh, a chance for us to use Garchomp here. So Foul Play is just there to just break Sash, deal a nice little chip damage. Earthquake's going to be coming in here. Remember, our Snorlax isn't intimidated, but he's also not very strong. So uh, we're going to see if this can kill the Coke. I don't think it's going to be able to. Yeah, not even close. All right, so. Next turn, I think, is going to be the big turn where he tries to nuke something. Right? Right? How many turns of uh, Encore, or Taunt? This is my last turn of Taunt. This turn, we're going to foul play the Crocodile, and just go for another Earthquake. Like, why? There's nothing I can really do. I'm taunted, and I need my stuff in the back to be at full HP, or else I'm in, a, I'm in for a bad time. So, he's switching in the Serena... Wow, I could have actually done a ton of damage that thing with foul play. He's going for a crunch onto my orange guru. Ouch. Is that going to KO? It's stabbed, yeah. It's going to KO. So it kind of sucks. We've seen taunt and uh, crunch on that guy. So EQ's going to hit the board. How much damage does it do on a croc again? Like 20%? That's not bad. It's not bad damage. Not bad damage. I think I'm going to be able to bring in uh, Coco here and just go for D-Gleam and... Uh, don't want a rock slide. I might just switch in the chomp. You know the Serena's there to check the wax right now. So we're going to pop a D Gleam. Snorlax can't protect itself. I'm going to hard switch in the chomp. It's not a good play, but it is what it is. Just really wasn't expecting the Crocodile to be the taunter in this scenario. Uh, 
protect on Croc. Blocking Z move potential, I guess. So that means he, his Coco was probably uh, Fairy and Z, I'm guessing then. I don't think it was specs, I really don't. I know it spammed a lot of discharge, or a lot of other stuff like that. But it's with a high jump kick, wow. It's not going to KO at all. Uh, it's going to chunk me quite a bit, but it's not going to KO. And he's going to take rough skin damage. Those are things that I take. So I think this turn, what we're going to do is we're going to Dazzling Gleam. And uh, we're going to actually Rock Slide, try and pick up a double KO here. Hopefully we're faster than his Crocodile with our Chomp, but I really don't think we are. His Croc doesn't seem too bulky. If he's switching in the Coco here, this is actually be really good for us. Switching in the Marowak, same thing. We take these. Uh, we might be able to pick up a double KO, barring the Serena's item. Like, Dazzling Gleam plus Rock Slide, it can also flinch. I ain't doing shit. We ain't doing any damage. But uh, Rock Slide's going to come in here. We're faster than Serena. Let's see if he's just popping a Trop Kick on my Garchomp. It's not going to be enough to KO, I don't think. So we'll see. He's going for a Play Rough. I don't even think there's a reason to have that move, because it still doesn't stab it. Like, that's it still doesn't KO. Like, I don't, I don't agree. Not, not agreeing there. So Electricity's finally gone. Uh, I think I'm just going to go for the uh, Dazzling again. Note that we've seen all four of his Pokemon, and our Coco still has the Sash. He has Faint. i got to watch out for Faint. I just Faint my Garchomp. We've seen Play Rough. High Jump Kick. And that's it. We know he has Faint. So that means the play here is D Gleam and Hard Switch in the Lax. Gotta protect the Chomp. Chomp is actually really important for dealing with the Marowak. I think. I think it is. I think it's very important. So Chomp's gonna switch out. Like Snorlax can still technically do it, but I don't do not recommend going for the Faint. Cool. Who you hitting though? Yeah, of course you're in the Guard Chomp slot. Right out of berry range, that kind of sucks, but it's not the end of the world. And uh, there we go. More damage on Marowak. If he's popping a Flare Blitz, he's going to be in for a bad time, and I really think he has the Bone Ring. Like, they always do. 99% of them have Bone Ring. He can miss, though. Damn. I just don't think Bone Ring's good. I really don't. Like, if you're intimidated, it's not KOing. Which is why I don't like it. Okay. We haven't lost just yet. He has the Crocodile, right? And a Coco. Can't use Electric Attacks. He can Discharge. But, like, is he really going to lock himself in the Discharge if he is Spexed? I don't think so. And he can't use like a big Z move if he sends Coco out. He has to send Croc out. And he's going to taunt me again. Okay. I think I'm going to Z move that Croc. Hmm. I'm going to Z move the Croc. I don't think it ever came out if I was fast. I think he switched it that turn. Should I just pop a recycle expecting to get hit? I could just also rock slide. I don't think Bellow Drum's the play. I don't, because I think Marowak's faster than me. So I'm just going to rock slide. Goes for a detect? Cool. I'll take the KO on his, car uh, his croc if he wants to give it to me. I'll take the KO on his croc if he wants to give it to me. What sucks is that my lax is like at 55%, so I'm in a I'm in a really scary spot versus that Coco. Mm. I don't even know if this KOs, because like I'm intimidated. Perfect. Cool. Marowax protect us on cooldown. I could have belly drummed there, but you know, I, I just wanted to get a little bit more damage. I might protect with my Garchomp and just recycle for a turn to see what the Coco's doing. I don't think that's good, though. He's going to go D-Gleam and attack my Lax. Well, actually, if I look at it like this, will my Earthquake from my Snorlax KO his Coco? Maybe. I'll protect and do Earthquake. Tech with Garchomp and just go for an Earthquake. We're going to try it. Hopefully my Earthquake from my Intimidated Lax can take out the Coco. I don't think it can at all. So we're going to see, because last time I was using Earthquake, I wasn't Intimidated. So we're protecting with Garchomp here. He's going for a D-Gleam, and D-Gleam is going to activate my Berry. Those are definitely things that I take in this matchup. The Berry, that's actually a little bit more damage than I wanted to take, but uh, I think I should be able to eat a Flare Blitz regardless. He's going for a Flare Blitz. If this doesn't KO me, I think I'm going to be okay. Just freaking kidding, he crit me. He crit me! I was going to be fine! 
Because, like, he just killed himself. Yeah, he would have killed himself to the Earthquake. It would have been dealing single-target damage. It was going to do, like, 60%, and now we just lose. That's definitely unfortunate, but, uh... You can't win them all. Crits are part of the game. I shouldn't have even had a shot to come back in this game, I don't think. But I think he got me. Yeah, that sucks. I was going to eat that, no problem. Oh, well. Yeah, that's a loss. Uh, I think in the best of three, I would have been fine. It looks like it is Specs to Coco, but... Uh, that's really, really unfortunate that he got the crit on the Fire Blitz. Uh, I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, like, I, I tried my best. So, that was today's games. I played three games. One, two, lost one. And I don't think it's the end of the world. Uh, I should have probably belly drummed the previous turn, but it doesn't really matter. Maybe... No, I, I'm, I'm happy with the plays that I made in that game. Uh, it's just that it sucks that I got crit. And crits are part of the game. So, as always, guys, let me know what you guys think about this team in the comments below. We're probably going to be using it for a couple more videos because I want to use more Pikachu. And uh, we just fight so many Marowaks right now that it's really hard to use the Pikachu. So, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.